Hey guys, it's Jeremy with Tech Creation. So I wanted to share with you guys my experience with the all new 15 inch MacBook Pro Retina and why I upgraded from the 13 inch model. Stick around. All right, so I wanna start off by explaining why I bought the 13 inch model in the first place. So I bought it primarily for this YouTube channel to edit. I know how great Macs are and this Mac right here I had since 2009 and I've edited a bunch of HD material on this one and had no problem. So I don't want to spend too much, so I went with the lower end model. Basically, I was trying to cut corners, get the cheapest one, just for, just for editing, knock it out the way. If you check out my review of the 13 inch MacBook Pro, you'll see some of the key points I mentioned. And one of them I mentioned was the fact that I was able to scrub through the timeline in Final Cut Pro with HD content and experience no lag. However, I didn't start to experience problems until I edited my Galaxy S6 video, 16 minute video, HD content from my phone, from the camera, tons of material, all types of clips, titles, transitions, etc. I noticed a tremendous amount of lag on my timeline. Once you start to edit lengthy projects, let's say around 10 minutes or more, that's when you start to experience the real problems. Video editing is intensive on RAM. The 13 inch model I bought only had eight gigabytes of RAM and it was 128 gigabytes of storage. Okay, so number one, I got the low disk space warning tons of times. And number two, the beach ball effect as I, my projects got larger and larger, I was getting the beach ball effect about every 10 to 15 seconds to the point where it became unusable. So that's why I decided to go ahead and shell out money for the new 15 inch MacBook Pro Retina as I really needed it. As always with tech, you can't cut corners, you kind of get what you pay for, but this one feels a lot heavier. So that's something to keep in mind if you're gonna throw it in your backpack. It fixed some of the problems I was experiencing with the 13 inch model, which was the lag. I don't have no lag. I actually imported the Galaxy S6 project that I worked on that gave me crazy lag, and I put it on this laptop smooth as butter 16 gigabytes of memory it works pretty good it handles it well of course more would be better my last video if you check out my last video i had over 200 gigabytes of content on the timeline i'm talking about 4k footage from my gh4 4k footage from my galaxy s6 and i had h1080p footage from my canon t2i i had all of these coexisting on the same timeline bunch of clips it was an eight minute long video worked fine the only thing i would say is that when you're editing with 4k content the fan kicks on now it doesn't lag or anything but the you start to hear the fan kicks on it sounds like a jet the laptop will heat up of course because it's doing such a strenuous task so in final cut pro if you guys know there's two options when you're editing you can choose better performance or better quality the minute i selected better performance the fan shut off and i had absolutely no problems editing 4k content on the same timeline with transitions adding titles etc etc i understand that you could edit with proxy files and optimized media but my time is precious and i don't really have time to be transcoding footage i like to work with the files directly import them so i did an export test on that last video and as you can see from here from this time lapse it's really not that bad the battery life on this was good. Apple says nine hours, but of course it's all objective. It depends on what you're doing. And for me in particular, for any video editors out there, I'm sure you guys can relate. Video editing for about six hours straight, the battery was taxed. Like I mentioned in my 13 inch MacBook Pro review, it charges super fast. If you put this thing to charge at 10%, jump in the shower, you come out, it's at 45% or 50%. You're good. This thing charges very, very fast. So it was a problem, but not really, you know. The screen, of course, is beautiful. You, the retina display, you guys, if you guys don't know, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm not going to get into detail because it's basically the same thing as the 13-inch model. So it's just going to be redundant. Same features, has the trackpad, faster this, faster that, has 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage. You have tons of options on the Apple website. You can opt for more storage or less storage. The choice is up to you. Overall, if anybody's serious out there about video editing and you want to get stuff done efficiently, 
This is a great video editing machine, especially with 4K content, as I mentioned. A lot of you guys kept asking me, was the 13 inch model good for school? Yes, the 13 inch model is good for writing papers, looking up stuff, regular browsing. So if you're gonna ask if this one is good for school, yes, it's great. Anyway guys, I hope this video helped and put things into perspective for you a little bit and ultimately help you make a decision when buying your first laptop for your needs and purposes. Alright guys, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.